Hello guys, I am back on the server with Church Mag and I'm in a whoa, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. So I am in the desert, stuck in this well. Put myself there. Gotta avoid the mobs out here. So we are in new land, which means I need to be extra careful. Um let me go ahead and put this down. I'm wanting to do a design with you guys on camera. I've This isn't my original design, but I want to do a mob spawner because I need gunpowder like it's nobody bi nobody's business. And I can't get it fast enough. And I know that we also get witches spawning out here, so this is an excellent area. Our portal actually spawns in that town. If you go through there, you actually get to our uh, nether brick smeltery in the gold farm. And I'm trying, I'm making an attempt to actually have a uh, squid farm, but it's not working very well. Kind of sad about that, but it is what it is. So anyways, I am out here, and I want to get our entire mob spawner up and running from here. So that's where why I'm out here. Just realized I need to take the lid off this if I want to not fall to my death goes all the way down there come on might as well just leave this off so this is all my blocks I've got of course do I need to take more? Yeah, I should be good so I'm wanting to make a mob spawner but I'm not wanting to do it on the ground because there's gonna be a ton of caves and it'll ruin my actual spawn rates so I figure let's just go up as high as possible I'm actually going to have this be a rail system that goes all or a, the mine cart I guess they call it clicky cart um, elevator here so that you can just fly up and then you can fly down and hit the water oh shoot clouds are on I might not actually be able to make it if I don't see where I'm landing this is a nice little view up here so I'm wanting to do this way up here. It's not my own design, like I said. Um, it's actually designed by a guy named um, Mumbo, I guess. He designed this, um, so I'm going to leave him all the credit. Huh. Missing chunk. That's not good. Interesting. So yeah, the portal's there, the mob farm is, or the squid farm is right over there. And we are about 3,000 blocks that way for the actual spawn town that we have. So I'm wanting to build this as high as possible. How far up are we? Let's see. Nope, not what I wanted. Um, we are at... 180 so let's hit 200 let's go ahead and start building this the idea behind it is you basically just make a huge enclosed area you have um, water this is good enough um, you have water that actually pushes all the mobs to their death by um, pushing them out onto hoppers um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do all hoppers or mostly hoppers I have enough materials for either one and yeah, that's kind of what I want this to be. I'm going to actually make it long ways this way. And this will just be the middle of it. So let's see, we've got this. And then the wall would be probably about here. So let's mark this. Oh, I don't have it. All right, let's just mark it here. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to build the basic setup. Um, on camera because I figure I can talk as far as Minecraft theology is concerned and then afterwards um, I'll do the rest of the actual construction offline and show you guys the final result of it so it's supposed to go five out and then I believe it's supposed to go one two three four five times six plus five so 35 wide so maybe let's go 13 this way. I'm just going to do a, a rough guess on it and then you guys get to see everything else outside of this. So don't expect to see too much on here. 
Um, with that being said, the topic I wanted to talk to you guys about today um, comes from just the idea of needing to be serious. And let me preface this by saying that I am probably talking to myself more than anybody else um, because I can be annoying. I guess this is the best word to put it. Um, because I am a very serious person and I have a job that's expected to be very serious. And so we all have, or we all, I at the very least, have this expectation that everybody should just be serious and stop screwing with my time. And so when I work with people online, I tend to get frustrated when they're not taking me serious. When in fact, I'm the one that needs to kind of chill out sometimes. So let me first of all say that I am talking to myself as much or more than anybody else um, on this topic. But the idea of being so serious online kind of frustrates me because we, I don't know, we want to improve our lives and we want to make sure that the world is a better place. And for the gospel, I get that. I want, I want people to take seriously what it means to understand and know what it means to be a Christian. And Christianity in and of itself is a very serious matter. Um, but I don't think it necessarily means that we need to be negative or rude or anything else like that. And here's where I'm coming with this, the context of the story. So we've been doing a lot of offline, I'm probably giving away secrets, but that's okay. Sorry, Eric. Um, but we've been doing a lot of offline. What does it mean to do podcasting? How can we keep doing this well? How do we try to make sure that we are really shooting for doing amazing things? And I get that there's a lot of things online that are hateful and racist and mean-spirited and misconstruing and lying, those things need to be taken seriously. I've had many instances where people are very serious about, or they're, they're misconstruing what I have to say, and I get upset about it. I get that, that makes sense. But we need, I, th I feel like we need as a culture to just kind of chill out. Um, and that's a general term that I'm kind of holding to myself. I think I'm actually building this too small. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Um, and if it's three times th three times five plus five more, nineteen. Let's do twenty, just in case. All right. Um, and let's go this way too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, oh we got a lot more, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh wow, a whole bunch more. Um, so we were talking about the podcast. How do we make the Church Mag podcast even better? Um, and there's a lot of informational podcasts out there that I don't think that we can compete with. At least this is my own personal thoughts. And I look at what I want as far as my own advisement into a podcast. And there are podcasts I listen to that I'm like, you know what? I need to learn about this thing. I need to have that knowledge. But I almost see that as more of an audiobook thing than anything else. And so I don't see that as my main driving source for podcasts. I see podcasts as an entertainment platform and not as a, a learning different things. Because I want to pay for that. I want to make sure that what I'm getting is quality work. And so um, nothing says not quality like free. Um, it's just a kind of a general standard that if it's free... It has freeze amount of effort in it, and I really 
I'm, I'm really hesitant to say that that's something worth value. Yeah, entertainment in and of itself can be free. Um, and I get that there's advertisements, so it's not free for most of the time. Um, but I look at my own podcast list and the ones, we can make a podcast, you can make a website, you can make social media, you can make a podcast, you can do any kind of content you want online. But if you want to do something that's really well done, you're going to need to do it with gusto. You're going to need to make sure that you are actually putting your heart into this project, which means that you need to have something that is going to keep people coming back and back. And I look at the podcasts I listen to, and the podcasts I listen to, the ones that I have to do um, or get through, the ones I have to listen to, I listen to half-heartedly whenever I am mowing, whenever I'm doing yard work, whenever I'm exercising, all those different things. And I don't want that to be our podcast, at least as far as Church Mag is concerned. But the ones that I know exactly when they're going to download, they don't say we're going to be live Friday at 5 p.m., but because I'm waiting and anticipating that download, I know exactly when it's supposed to go live. And that's the kind of podcast that I want to create. And a lot of people want the informational one, and that's great. But just looking at my own use case habits, I personally am driven towards having that funny aspect, that conversational piece, that part where I just feel like I'm being part of the group and enjoying that. And that's really what we go for as far as Church Mac. And so obviously that's what we want to try to to establish with that kind of content, which is why I have no hesitation with doing Minecraft. There's a couple of people that have said, why in the world are you doing Minecraft videos and wasting your time with that? You shouldn't be playing video games. You should be doing God's work. And I don't disagree with the God's work part of things, but I also think that I am doing God's work by introducing people that are gamers to something that are, is really enjoyable and fun to me. And I want it to be something that is fun. I want it to be something that's entertaining in this process. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people out there don't have that aspect to the content that they're creating. And I want to have that. I want to have that entertainment value. So I say all this because it's just what's been going through my head with Church Mag and with um, my own personal content that I have. Obviously, this is Minecraft Theology, so this is still on Church Mag. Um, but I want to get something to you guys that you anticipate it coming up. You, If you were to actually follow when we post our Minecraft videos on Church Mag, you know that they come out on Fridays. And if you enjoy the podcast, you know that the podcast, if you're subscribed to it... Whoa, that was a scary. If you guys are subscribe to it, you know it comes out Friday morning. Um, and if you're checking it out through the website, then you know it comes out on Sunday. And we want that anticipation for our viewers. We want to be able to say that we're part of that process. So just some of the stuff that's running through my head. Um, not that it means too much, but I just thought I'd share that. I guess it's getting dark. But to kind of expand, I wanted to expand it beyond just creating content and towards social media in general. I'm going to fall off this thing. How terrible would that be? Um, towards the aspect of doing stuff online in general, I would hope that people would have that ability to have fun and to enjoy life. Um, Church Mag is literally that is their goal in life is to have fun and to enjoy life speaking of which let's <laughs> um um all right let's do it i'm gonna i guess i'm gonna make the rail line on up to this now as well just so we can have fast transportation because i'm almost out of bricks i guess we can go ahead and do the rest of the bricks but this will be, I guess, if I'm talking about entertainment, I might as well actually do it, huh? Alright, so <laughs> I'm hesitant about this, but we'll do it. I think this is too high here, is what we're going for. Yeah, I think it's too high. If not, this is going to be a lot of unnecessary work, but that's okay. So how do you do, how do you have more fun on social media? How do you have more fun on blogging? I think Church Mag epitomizes this with their nerdiness. Um, in fact, 
there's a lot of behind the scenes talk about who is Church Mag and what does this mean for us. Um, more to come on that later. Um, as you might hear on Doctor Who, no spoilers. Um, but we epitomize the idea of just trying to be nerdy and trying to have fun and to really just enjoy blogging in a general sense. And so how do you do that well? Um, just means to sometimes go off the grid and to do what you love and not care about the audience, not care about the people. Because I can sit here and say, you know what, social media content marketing is extremely important. It is. Um, and then they say you need to have goals and strategies and follow the numbers and all this stuff, different stuff. And it quickly, quickly loses heart about how to engage from a very authentic self. And I don't want this to turn into a how to be a better marketer because that's boring. Um, but I do want to say, keep being who you are. I am someone that loves video games. I'm someone that loves to be a father and to be a counselor. And so hopefully you guys get a sense of that through all the different content that I personally post or am a part of. And that's partly what Church Mag is about is we are just a whole bunch of nerds that love the church and we love being creative and technical and we're not ashamed of it and we're not going to hold back from it. Um, whereas a lot of people are, let's have success and let's try to win. And let me be clear, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody that's terrible. If I have a problem with someone, I will be more than happy to talk with them personally. So don't think that I'm accusing anybody here. That's not the case. Because um, sometimes my words do get misconstrued. And I don't want that to happen. Wow, that was close. So I, it'd be interesting to hear what you guys have to say on this topic of what it means to be serious, too serious sometimes and not have a little fun um, and sometimes just kind of lose yourself in the process. Um, I love Dave Strang does um, periscoping and he tweets a lot of different tweets about his periscopes which are enjoyable you guys should check them out um, but one of the things that he talks about and he tries to reiterate and I don't know I haven't talked to him about this I probably should <laughs> especially if I'm gonna videotape it but that's okay um, but he talks a lot about how he wants to just be true to himself. And whenever he records, sometimes he finds that he goes, um, uh, yeah, so, and flutters and flubs and everything in the middle. And he says, you know what, I kind of like that about that about me because then I can just be me. I can just talk about the content I want to talk about. And I'm okay with that. And I really enjoy that he says that because... That for me is the heart of this entire conversation of just be real guys, just be who you are. Quit trying to make a name for yourself. Quit trying to be someone you're not. And yeah, that's just a general thought. So let's see how this goes. Give me one second. Um, all right. So I'm gonna make a drop here. I'm gonna film it. And I'm going to do the rest of this part off camera, and then I'll come back and show you guys what I got. So here goes. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. All right. So you got to see that. And I'm all the way over here. Of course I am. So let me go grab all my stuff, and I will be back, guys. See ya. All right, guys. Quick update for you. Um, we're pretty high up and there's a lot of layers here. So I'm going to drop down here in a second. We got the hype, the hopper, um, I guess it's called the hopper clicky elevator or the minecart clicky elevator. I don't know why I said hopper. Um, I'm doing it a little bit differently in the sense of going down. It can be just kind of a slow descend with that process. Um, and we're here in the middle. No creepers, no creepers, just an enderman. Okay. Um, you can see it's a pretty lengthy process up, um, and it's just a really simple approach. Go up, you can hear you just click or you can hold down the button and you get all the way up. Um, I don't do the special hopper just because there's no need for it. Um, I do have ladders going up through here, um, but honestly, after this is finished construction, I'm not going to be going up there. Um, in fact, I'm planning on just building 
somewhere over here in AFK area there where you can just kind of hide out. Um, it'll have a bed, it'll have, I have an ender chest on me. Um, so we'll be able to do that as well. So this is the design as far as getting up there. Um, I'm gonna cut away in just a minute to do the rest of the spawner. And we'll get to that in a second. I do wanna show you what it looks like from an angle from a distance, cause it looks kinda cool. So long as we get down here. All right, so if we come over here, the portals over here, like I mentioned, I'll show you where you come out in the portal and what you see the whole time. And there are these random mobs. Um, I thought about lighting the place up, but at the same time, that's a lot of effort. So if I do do it, I'll just do it on a Jeremy Plays Minecraft episode. But I don't know if that would be worth it. So the portal's in here. You come out the portal. If you go that way is where the squid spawner is supposed to be. And then you see that. And it just goes up into the heavens. It's really cool. Uh, so if we go over here and you just get closer and closer, it almost looks like a skeletal structure kind of going up to that. It's kind of a cool version. I don't know if I'll actually make a design of it it's just because this will be something you come out here to AFK most of the time. There's no reason to actually have a design. I thought it was pretty cool. Pretty cool setup to do this approach. So this is actually going to... Hello. You're bad. Good. Um, so this is a really cool setup as far as just trying to get a lot of different mob spawns. Specifically, I need the gunpowder. Um, and th so you just come up here. Once you get to the top, um, I just shot myself. Uh, I think I'm going to just make the AFK over here because you get out and you just go into the AFK area. And then mobs start dropping and then the I'll have a whole bunch of hoppers down here at the bottom, a ton of chests that collect all the mob spawns. Um, have a filtering system over here. The filtering system I'll do on a second episode um, because I figure I would have all that then. Um, but because it is going the long ways, uh, which was intentional, all the drops will just come out right here. And so then there will just be the chest right here that you can collect all the stuff, the ender chest you can put stuff in to transport. Yeah, it'll be a nice little setup. I think it's going to be probably the most proficient thing I've had done in a little while. So. I'm going to get to work on this and I'll jump back and show you guys the actual drops as they're coming along. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys. So this is the final product and I built a little platform out here just to improve the spawn rates, but let me show you a little bit about what's going on over here. So we've got the, all the redstone set up. Um, it was kind of tricky to set this up because whenever I initially I was setting it up, I had the water already in there and so the water was mismatched I had to go in there and optimize it but if you look in here you see the water runs on this timer that we have set up obviously not my design so I'll, I'll put a link down there for you guys to check that out um, but while we're up here stuff should start spawning in here hopefully I know that was down below and there's a lot of creatures but hopefully something comes up Maybe. Now you're just doing this because I'm recording, aren't you? But I can guarantee that the spawner is working, especially when you stand over here on this side of things. The spawns increase dramatically. Which means I'm going to try to go ahead and put the our hopper or minecart elevator all the way up. But I do want that to be the stopping point because I do want you to be able just to hang out if you want to grab the items and head up. Um, if that's what you want to do. So I will have that initially for that setup. Anything falling? Hmm. Must be an off day. I, th I know that Augie's on right now as well and that affects the mob cap. So maybe that's just impacting the spawn rates right now. Ouch. Um, but we do have a lot of items. Um, the bones are crazy. Um, but we are getting other things besides that. The bones I'm not really worried about because we have our own skeleton farm. Um, so this is, oh, there went something. Um, this is more for the glowstone, for the gunpowder, the redstone, and the bottles. Sticks are nice, the sugar's nice, but everything else is really, really important for me. Spider eyes, we have a spider farm. Um, 
but it doesn't produce spider eyes very well. So this will be nice for spider eyes when we need them, but I don't anticipate needing a ton of them. All this other junk, I, we will do another episode where we do kind of a sorting system. Um, maybe not right away, but we'll do that to set it up. And um, we'll have an on and off switch that'll have a dispenser that will shoot out all of the stuff we don't want if we really don't want to keep those extra things. Um, and so we'll just check it out, see how it goes. But for now, I like it. It's a good setup. You can have AFK for a while here and really get a lot of different mobs. In fact, this whole thing was full after waiting just an hour. So I already have all the gunpowder I initially wanted, which is amazing. But yeah, that's the whole setup for this, guys. Um, it actually took quite a while to build. So if you guys plan to do something yourself, don't expect it to be done overnight. But it was a nice little setup. I'm actually going to hang out here, kind of get some more spawns going for us. But let me know what you guys think. Have you guys built your own version of this? Do you have your own item filter that has a... Um, filtering system for items you don't want that just kind of shoots them into a cactus or something. Love to hear what you guys have to say with that. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.